Shut up and sit down. Welcome everyone, this is Resolute Kraken and this is the first video in my series on how to use the Resolute Track Builder Helper application that I designed. Uh, it's meant to help new track builders and experienced ones alike to uh, have a more enjoyable track building experience for MX bikes. So I designed this application to be able to create and manage all of the text files that are needed to create a track for MX bikes. Uh, it is used in conjunction with the Pobozo track tools. And so you're going to need to have some knowledge of track building, uh, the track building process in order to use this tool successfully. So before we get started, I would suggest that you take a look at the user manual for this application. Uh, it can be found uh, in the description of this video or on the MX Bikes forum post for the application. Uh, it has links to all the tools and resources needed for you to learn about building uh, MX Bikes tracks. In the prerequisite section, I have links to all of the known documentation from Pibozo about track making, uh, links to the track tools, uh, the example track download, and also links to uh, TFC's YouTube channel and Nico's channel where they have some tutorials on track building, uh, working with Blender and the Pibozo tools uh, to complete a track. So I very highly suggest taking a look at those so you get familiar with uh, the complete track building process and everything that that entails. Before you even get started with the application, you'll need to download and install the Pibozo track tools. Uh, the link is in the user manual or you can find it on the forums. Uh, you'll want to just download that zip file, extract it, and put them in an easy to locate location on your computer. Uh, my application is built so that you will access these tools from this location and you will not have to copy the track tools into your individual project folders. So please be aware of this. This is a change. Um, if you happen to be following along with TFC's tutorials, uh, he copies the track tools into each project folder. Again, just be aware if you happen to be following along with him, we don't do that with this application. The download for this application is on the MXB forums. Uh, it has its own post. Uh, simply go to it. The link to this post is in the description of this video. Uh, scroll down until you get to the download section. Um, again, if you have not already reviewed the user manual, now is a good time to do that. Click that, download the PDF, take a look at it beforehand so you know what's going on. Uh, and it has all the links to all of the tools and everything else that you will need. Uh, when you're ready to go, click the download link. Uh, it'll take you to Mediafire. Go ahead and hit the download link. And once it is downloaded successfully, uh, you will just need to extract the zip file. And once the zip file is extracted, uh, you will simply be running the setup.exe file. You get this prompt, go ahead, run it anyways. And that will open the installer for you. Uh, you can simply click through it if you want to change where you are uh, installing it. Go ahead and browse there. If not, just click through. This will install it for you. And that's it. It is now installed. And if you ever want to uninstall the application, simply go to your control panel, add remove programs, and it should be listed there. Resolute MXB Track Builder Helper. Uh, you can also check your version number there to see what you're currently on. Right after successfully installing it, you should see a shortcut on your desktop. Uh, I always like to pin that to my taskbar so I can see it down there, easy access. Uh, but anyways, you will just uh, double click that and start it up for the first time. Right, the first time that you start this application, it's going to run through this first run wizard. 
uh, just going to tell you, you're going to set up some settings for your track tools. And this is why is it important as the first step before you ran this, uh, you downloaded and uh, extracted those Pibozo track tools to a location on your PC. So from here, we're going to set the locations for uh, the four track tools uh, versus terrain, terrain editor.exe. So we will go back into wherever you had installed them. And that is it for the four track tools. Uh, and that is it. Just gives you a little bit of a, a message here. Uh, once you click finish, you're ready to go and you're ready to create um, or open an existing project. All right, for our first project, we are going to recreate the example track from Pibozo. Uh, it's a really good thing to start with. Um, even if you aren't using this application, uh, try to build that example track. It has everything that you already need, uh, height map, center lines, uh, race data, um, all the textures, a good mix of shader information um, and materials. Uh, so you can see if you can build that and um, that usually will give you an idea of what is involved in getting a track going but we're going to recreate that using this tool. Uh, so first thing you want to do, you can hit control N to create a new project or go to file new and this new, new project wizard will pop up. Uh, just follow the instructions. We're going to give our project a name, Apple track. And now we're going to select the folder where our track project is going to live. I am just going to make a new folder on my top here. Like that. And now this next step is these are the folders that live within your uh, track folder. Um, I'm sorry, your project folder. Uh, so the first one is the track build folder. This is the folder where all of your track files get built to. This is the folder that will you will copy to uh, the MX, MX Bikes mods folder where you can then play it in game. This is the folder that you will uh, give to everybody. Um, you will compile it as a PKZ file and and distribute it to everybody. Uh, the next one is, so we're just going to leave it as an example track. You can use spaces um, in the name of the track. And the next one is your textures folder. This is where all of your textures are going to live. Um, it defaults to maps. Maps is just the default folder that comes with the example track. Uh, so I went ahead with that nomenclature and just use match as well. But you can name it whatever you want. So in this case, let's just rename it to what we want textures. Um, then our mass folder, those are where all your masks for your materials and your and your textures also go. And also your models folder. Uh, the models is any of your scenes, all the, uh, the track objects that you were going to use. They're going to go there in most cases. There's a couple exceptions and that would be something like your background uh, model or your sky domes which would live in your track project folder if you had custom ones there. And then finally are uh, the mods and track folder for tests. Um, this is the mod folder that you want this copy to. So we would go to our uh, MXB tracks folder, and then we're going to select one of these. Uh, you can even make a custom one like I made a testing one before, um, but I'm just going to drop it into motocross and that's it. So it's going to copy your folder into that motocross folder. Then you can start up the MX bikes and look for your track and, and test it out. Um, also, I forgot to mention, it says if, if this any of these are left blank, this one is required, but the textures, mask, or models, if those are left blank, then you can just put everything in the root of your project folder. It's a little helpful, though, to keep them all separate, uh, keep your projects a little cleaner. Uh, that's all that's needed, and once you do that, your project will be created and saved. And now you're, you're there with a blank a blank project and we will go over um, kind of what everything on this UI is.
Right. So let's take a look at the UI and what all the major portions are. Uh, let's start at the top for the menu. Uh, you already saw this when you created your new project, but a uh, new or control N will create you a new project. Uh, you can open an existing one, uh, go ahead and save it, uh, view the settings window or exit out. Uh, let's take a look at the settings window. So the settings window, um, this gives you uh, the ability to change the location of your track tools. Uh, if you ever do change it, um, where you downloaded them, or if for some reason you accidentally canceled out of the first wizard um, when you started the application for the first time, uh, just go ahead and hit the select button and then it will allow you to select that tool. Uh, dark mode is set by default. If you don't like dark mode, you can go back to the default light mode. Uh, I'm sorry, dark mode is actually the default, which I prefer. So I made it the default for everyone. Uh, display texture previews option. That is uh, when you start adding texture layers, it'll show you a preview of the texture in the text box. Uh, if you don't want that, you can disable that. Uh, auto saving. Uh, anytime you make a change that is noticed by the application to your project, it will automatically save it every five minutes. Uh, you can change that to whatever you want. Um, and you can select the language uh, of the application. Right now, English, French, German, Italian, Portuguese, and Spanish. Uh, only the English, German, and Italian have been validated by a native speaker. So if you see any problems, uh, go ahead and let me know either in the forums or on my Discord server. Uh, let me know if you see any problems with that or if you want it translated into your own language um, and are willing to help out with that translation, let me know as well and we can get that going. That's it for the settings window. All right, so on the tools menu, that's just, uh, again, an easy way to open the Pibozo track tools, uh, track editor, map view, and FBX to EDF. And on the help, uh, the user manual that will just open up again, the existing user manual that you can get the same link on the forums, but this one is built into the application and the about screen. The about screen will show you the current version of the application, uh, a little message, and it also has a link to my discord server. Again, if you want to talk about this application, if you find bugs or if you have ideas on how to make it better, uh, let me know in, in my discord, in the, uh, track builder helper, uh, chat channel. Um, Hey, and if you ever, ever feel like, uh, donating to me, um, it'd be much appreciated, uh, if this tool helped you making any of your tracks, uh, all the money goes back into, uh, new tools or, uh, new tracks and assets. Right now we'll continue down on the right side of the application. You're going to see a section for your height map. Uh, this allows you to select your height map and we'll get into the details of that once we start actually uh, creating our track here. Uh, the map scale, uh, center lines, um, all your build commands and tools. Again, this is just quick, quick link back to the Pivoza track tools that you'll be using quite a bit as you build your track. Uh, let's go back to the build commands. Uh, you're going to see uh, there's quite a few buttons here for building all of your uh, files. Um, some of them are disabled by default. Um, and that's because right now this new project, we don't have, uh, we don't have a height map set. We don't have a, um, any textures. We don't have anything set to actually build our map or our TRH files, uh, merger center lines. So we can't do anything about that. Um, one good thing, let's take a look at this open project folder that will, take you directly to your project folder that we created. So as we can see, we created that example track folder. Um, we see that we have our, that's our build folder, example track, mask, models, and textures. And this is the track project file. This is the file that contains all of your settings that are in this application. Uh, so again, uh, you can, you can move this folder, your, your project folder anywhere, open it up and everything should be good to go. Copy it to it send it over to somebody else, um, they should be able to open it and have no problem with it. All right, that's it for that. Okay, so let's take a look now at all of the tabs that go with a project. Uh, these tabs pretty much correlate uh, to one or more files that are needed for the 
uh, MXB tracks. Um, when you hit the right project files, it will take any of your data that are in these files and actually generate the valid track files for you. Uh, so our first one is the textures. The textures, these are what go on top of your map file, um, all of your masks, uh, things for adding shaders. Uh, again, we'll, we'll get into this in the next video of how to exactly use this. Uh, some of these, um, some of these tabs will have import buttons where you can import from an existing file, like from another track, uh, from the textures, you can actually import the shader settings, um, from existing shaders. Uh, so let's go over to the materials again, materials, this equates to the actual materials of your, your soil, soft soil, sand, grass, uh, et cetera. This is what builds, uh, and makes the collision file for your TRH file. Uh, your scenes, the scenes tab is used to add scenes for your track objects. Um, sometimes you might only have one of these if you put all of your track objects into one scene. Uh, for like Krakenberg, I had probably 19 or 20 different scenes with all my trees broken up into different sections of the map, um, etc. on that one. Uh, surface area, these are your off-track area, your pit and start area mass. Uh, used for, for instance, on the off track for resetting the bike uh, to the edge of the track. Lighting and shadows. This is used for setting up uh, your light direction when the shadows are created. And also, this is also used in your, your AMB file uh, for the direction of your uh, sunlight in in game. Uh, the shadows, you can set up all your shadows, your shadow volumes, the shadow maps, uh, your terrain cast. Um, these are used when the uh, map file is built. And if it correlates also in conjunction with the build with shap meadows. So if you have this off, which it currently is by default, um, it's not going to use your shadow settings. And that is helpful when you're first starting out uh, and you're debugging and, and building your track a lot. Uh, building with shadows can take a little little longer than um, without it, and especially like on my track on the Krakenberg. If it's a big track, you have lots of objects that cast shadows, it could take hours to, to finish. So very helpful not to have that option there um, set to build with shadows. Background and skies. Uh, this is where you can set your background model. Uh, this kind of equates to your AMB file as well. Uh, and all of the different uh, types of skies for clear, cloudy, or rainy, the different ambient sun, sky, your fog colors, and your sky dome models that are uh, going to be used by your track. Uh, the dirt and GFX settings, this is the GFX file. Uh, the dirt and particle settings, these are the um, used in conjunction with the roost particles and the dirt color. Um, if the uh, gear makers or the bike makers have the um, the masks for the dirt masks set up and the mud masks set up correctly on those on those mods, um, this dirt color will be used on them. And uh, additional graphics is set. GFX settings go here. For instance, if you're using a timer. Um, or a special object that shows a timing. Uh, you, you can add in all the code here for that. Uh, sound files, this will allow you to, this is the SSC file, I believe, and it will allow you to add all the different sound sources uh, and create that file for you there. And your track info, uh, this is what gets shown in game when you're at the selection screen. Uh, track name, short name, uh, all that stuff, uh, your images. Uh, for that and the race type if it's normal straight rhythm or supermoto and your project settings if you ever want to change your settings uh, the name of your folders example track textures mass models uh, where you want this uh, to be copied to to the um, the mods folder you can come in here change it if you do happen to change any of these if I would change this back to maps I would have to manually go into my project folder and manually change that, move any files if I had to. Uh, but that allows you to do that. It doesn't do it automatically for you um, um, if you need to move things. And the log. 
the log will show you pretty much anytime you do a build, add textures, um, it's going to show you what happens uh, here and kind of uh, most useful when you're doing your builds uh, because it'll show you the start time and the end time. And uh, if any errors happen, uh, it'll, it'll log it here. And that's pretty much it for all of these files that uh, they get written when you use the right project files. All right, thanks everybody for watching. In our next episode, we will get into the nitty gritty of actually using the application to duplicate the example track. Thanks again, and I will catch you on the next one.